with spring planting on the horizon, we're taking a look at corn and soybean issues that could impact yield. On our next episode, we'll look at the importance of soybean planting dates. This week, we asked UNL professor of agronomy and horticulture Steve Mason to discuss whether corn row spacing and seeding rates should be adjusted based off current utilization in Nebraska. According to USDA uh, surveys, uh, the average row spacing in Nebraska is a little bit over 31 inches, uh, with 30 inch row spacing being the most common. Uh, plant populations uh, seeding rates vary greatly across the state depending upon primarily upon water availability through rainfall and irrigation from below 24,000 in the western more drying area dry areas to uh, uh, in excess of 30, 30 to 34,000 in irrigated or higher rainfall areas. Starting with row spacing, uh, how do growing degree days and solar radiation impact what you might do in terms of how far apart you space your rows? Well, basically it comes down to what's the likelihood of getting a response and interception of solar radiation. Unfortunately, increased uh, interception of solar radiation during early growing season doesn't always translate to increased yields at the end of the uh, growing season. Uh, most of the research would show that as we move further north in the United States, we get an increased response to narrowing rows. Uh, if you move south, uh, actually less response, in some cases actually uh, yield response to wider rows. And here in Nebraska, we're kind of right in the middle between the two of them in the battleground, whether there's a yield response or not. And obviously row spacing is something that, uh, at least at this point, farmers probably wouldn't make a decision on because of the, uh, the large cost of equipment that you would need to make. Right, and if you actually look at the, the uh, research results, uh, there's little uh, consistent yield increase to nearing rows in Nebraska environments, whether we talk about moving from 30s to 20s or moving from 30-inch row spacing to uh, twin row type of spacings. So in general, um, row spacing is probably not a major decision to make in Nebraska. If we're at 30-inch rows, which is the most common and the uh, close to the average in Nebraska, we're probably at about the best uh, row spacing that we have uh, with pres present production practices and hybrids that are available. But seeding rates, can you find in studies that seeding rates maybe increasing would benefit corn yield? Uh, this is an interesting question because uh, uh, seeding rates uh, responses are not consistent across years or across production environments. So when we start talking about the average, uh, of course in Nebraska average uh, doesn't always uh, work. Uh, generally, uh, studies that have been done show that much of the yield increase that we've had in the United States since 1930 uh, time frame is not really due to increases in uh, yield potential of uh, corn, but rather is due to the fact that newer hybrids have improved resistance to crowding stress, and therefore much of the, the response is due to increasing plant populations and seeding rates. Is there a significant fall off at a certain point uh, of seeding rate based off of uh, you know, the seed cost itself? Well, it gets to be complex. The yield response is usually at the top or the most desirable plant population is, is, a pretty, is a pretty flat. So being off uh, either uh, a, a couple thousand too high or a couple thousand lower than the optimum doesn't have large economic uh, considerations. Uh, however, the, the equation from an economic standpoint has really changed with the increased seed cost of our newer uh, corn hybrids. And so uh, what may be the optimum plant population or seeding rate from a yield standpoint may not be the most economical. It's usually a little bit lower than that. Is there a recommendation then as to whether or not a farmer should increase his or her, plant, his or her seed population, seeding rate? Well, if we look at the USDA averages and we look at the research averages in Nebraska, there probably is an incentive to increase uh, seeding rates uh, uh, somewhat. Uh, most of the Nebraska research would show that we do not get the responses to really high seeding rates that's obtained in the eastern corn belt. So most of our research, both on station and on farm research, would suggest in high yield irrigated environments uh, about 34,000 seeds per acre to be on average uh, uh, appropriate. Obviously, if a farmer is uh, getting, uh, producing extremely high yields, uh, well above 200 bushels per acre, then a bump in seeding rate is probably justified. There seems to be a direct relationship between the yield, expected yield, yield potential, and uh, desired seeding rates. Finally though, increasing seeding rate could bring some problems like lodging. How big of a problem could that be? Uh, that's going to again be very variable from one year to the next and one environmental conditions to the other mm -hmm. and very hybrid dependent as well. 
Um, certainly as we increase plant populations and seeding rates, uh, plants get taller, uh, stalks get thinner, and they are more susceptible to uh, potential for lodging to occur. Obviously lodging is not going to occur if we don't have wind and some of those kinds of events. So it all becomes uh, dependent upon a very complex interaction of factors. For more information, you can visit the Market Journal website where we've linked to a NEB guide on row spacing and seeding rate recommendations for corn in Nebraska. Next week, we'll look at the importance of soybean planting dates with UNL Extension agronomist Roger Elmore.